السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم أقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد شاء الله now we would go to the next book the subject here is fiqh and the book that would be taught is قبلة المولي في تعليم المصلي the goal of the one who directs to teaching the one who prays by Sheikh Saleh bin Abdullah al-Usaymi Hafizahullah and I inshallah Abdullah Imran would be explaining the, this book a brief biography of the Sheikh Sheikh Saleh bin Abdullah al-Usaymi Hafizahullah he was born 1391 Hijri and from amongst his teachers are Sheikh Abdul Aziz and Baz Sheikh Muhammad Saleh bin Faimi Sheikh Bakr Abu Zaid, Sheikh Abdullah bin Aqil, Sheikh Abdul Wakil al Hashimi, and others. He, all, he studied in the Mamlaka, Sheikh Hamad al Ansari, also from amongst his teachers, and other Mashaikhs. He also traveled to different parts of the world in seeking knowledge. Some of the places that he traveled are India, Morocco, Yemen, Egypt and other places. The Shaykh is still alive. May Allah preserve him. He, Hafizahullah, is a teacher in the two um, holy mosques. And he is also from amongst the Hayat Kibar al ulama in Saudi Arabia, the council of higher or uh, great scholars in the Mamlaka in Saudi Arabia. He has written numerous books and has a lot of programs and a lot of people have indeed benefited from him. That is in concerning the, the Shaykh. As for the book that would be taught, the book is Qiblatul Muwalli Fi Ta'alim Al Musalli. That's the name of the book. And that was that is the name that the Shaykh printed the book as. That's in on the cover of the book. And he also read the book and he also explained it. Right? There are many things that concerns the wudu and the salah. Like for example, there are four broad headings that you could, when you're talking about the rulings of wudu and the rulings of salah, you could put, put them under four, four broad headings. With the first one for wudu is like shurut al-wudu, which is like conditions and prerequisites for wudu. Then the second thing is the description of the wudu. And the third thing is the things that are obligatory in the wudu, and the fourth thing is things that nullify the wudu. So the Sheikh Hafizahullah, in this book, he's dealing with the second aspect, which is the description of the wudu. And likewise, when we come to the Salah, for example, we could put it under five broad headings. Prerequisites for the Salah, the description of the Salah, the arkan of salah and the wajibat, which is the pillars of the salah and the obligatory acts of the salah, right? Things that nullify the salah. And then after that, we would they talk about sujood as sahu which is the rulings for sujood as sahu That is, if you make a mistake in the salah and you have to, to make it up, and you have to make it up with the sajda, then the rulings concerning that. So, in relation to the wudu, 
there are four broad headings in relation to the Salah, there are five broad headings. Sheikh Hafizahullah in this book, he only dealt with one of these headings in both of these chapters. So the first chapter, he deals with the wudu and he deals with the sifa, which is the description of the wudu. Right? And in the second chapter, he deals with description of the salah. As for the shurut and stuff, he does not deal with that. So inshallah, we're, we're going to stick to what the Sheikh dealt with inshallah. We're not going to go into too much of other things. We may mention certain things if, they, if there is a need for it. The Sheikh, Hafizahullah, also in this book, he did not mention, fill it with evidences. He just mentions the, the description, right? without mentioning the, the evidence for each act. So this book, he just mentions the issues one after the other. You do this, then you do that, then you do that, then you do that. And also the Sheikh mentioned, uh, mentions it according to what is correct by Imam Ahmad, Rahimahullah. So we will start, inshallah. The Sheikh starts his book by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah ma nudiya bis salah he starts by mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in the name of Allah the entirely merciful, the especially merciful all praises for Allah as long as the call to prayer is sounded and peace and blessings be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the chosen one and upon his family, companions, and those who are loyal and supportive to him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, that's the starting. And this starting of his, which is starting with the basmala, which is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and Alhamdulillah, and then sending salutations, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and sending salutations and, and prayers to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and those who follow him, is from the is from the good manners of beginning any book or any writing that the scholars have agreed upon. Then he went on to say, "Amma bad, fa inna min awwal al wajibat fi al mubtada wa al muntaha hatta al mamat ma'arifat sifati isbag al wudu wa ikhamat al salah." So he says to proceed. Surely one of the first obligation from the beginning stages of life to the end of it until death is knowing how to perfect the wudu and knowing how to establish salah. So here, as you could see, he mentions the perfection of the wudu, isbaghul wudu, and he mentions iqam to salah. And that is better than tawadda wa salli aw salah faqat. And al wudu wa salah, sifatu salah wa sifatu wudu. Sifatu salah would be the mere description of salah, does not necessarily mean the perfect description of salah. But when you say iqamatu uh, salawat, that is uh, the perfect way in doing the salah, the perfect way in performing the salah. And likewise, isbaghul wudu is the perfect way in doing uh, the wudu. So, the Sheikh starts by saying, Sifatul wudu an yanwi thumma yusammi fayaqul, bismillah. The description of wudu is as follows. That one makes his intention, then he mentions the name of Allah by saying bismillah. And a point to note here is that in the books of the Hanbali fiqh, when they say, thumma yusammi, they only mean Bismillah, except for one place, which is when they say it in relation to before starting the recitation of Surah Al-Fatiha. So in every other place when you see the word Thumma Yustammi, right, he mentions the name of Allah, they mean by it Bismillah. Thumma Yaghsilu Kaffayhi Thalathan Wa huwa Sunnah the 
Then he washes his hands three times. Sheikh went on to say, "Wa huwa sunnah," and this is sunnah, or it is sunnah. لغير قائم من نوم ليل ناقض لوضوء. For the one who has woken up from a night's sleep, which nullifies wudu. So anybody who is in a state other than this state, for him washing the hands is a sunnah and is not obligatory. As for the one, right, the second masala or the second issue is the one who wakes up from a night's sleep which breaks the wudu. What is the ruling for washing the hands for him? All right. The ruling for washing the hands for him, if he has not washed his hands yet, would be that it is wajib. All right? The Sheikh mentions here that he washes it three times with a niyyah and a tasmiyah. That is he intends. So if it is out of the wudu, if it is before he makes wudu, and he's going to wash his hand to eat or something, then he has an intention to wash his hand to wash his hand because here the washing of the hand is considered an act of worship. If it is in the wudu, then the intention of making the wudu suffices him. Then the Shaykh went on to mention the the third mas'ala or the third uh, issue in relation to the performing of the wudu or the isbag al wudu. Then he rinses his mouth and inhales water into his nose using his right hand. And that it be from one handful is better. That is, when he rinses his mouth and inhales water in his nose, for every time that he rends his mouth, he takes one handful and he rends his mouth and his nose. He rends his mouth and his nose together. That's the better thing to do. And that is most of what is narrated on the Prophet ﷺ. He did not take two separate sets of water, one to rinse his mouth and one uh, to inhale water into his nose. No. He took one set of water rends his mouth with it and inhales water into his nose at the same time right and he does that three times and then he takes the water out with his left hand right so he takes the water out with his left hand the next issue is the washing of the face right after that he washes his face and whatever is on it of light facial hair. So if the hair on the face on the on a person's face is light, right? He washes it until it reaches the skin. Right? If it's light. If it is heavy, right, if the person has a thick beard, for example, then he just washes the outer part of the beard, the part that is in front of him. He just washes it. And he passes his hands through, do takhleel, which is passes his hands through the beard. That is sunnah. But to wash the outer part of the beard, that is considered obligatory for a person who has thick beard. For a person who has thick beard. Then he went on to mention the other issue concerning the wudu, which is washing the hands, including the elbows. And this also should be done thrice. Right? So he washes the hands. Where does he start washing the hand? From the tips of the fingers. This is wajib. It is obligatory to wash the hand from the tips of the fingers, including the, the elbow. Three times is better. So from the tip of the finger, not from the wrist. Right? Some people, they make this mistake and they wash their hand from the wrist, no. So the washing of the hands would be from the tip of the fingers to and including the elbows. Then he wipes over his head. Right? He wipes over his head once. 
passing his hands from from the front of his head to the back of his neck up to the neck at the back that's where they where where the hair ends on the head right so he starts from the beginning of the head and he ends at the end of the head where the neck starts to the back of the neck and then he returns it back to the front of his head right from the place where he began then he puts his finger thumma yudkhilu sababatahu fi simakhi udhunay right into the inner part of his of his two ears wa yamsa wa yamsahu bi and he wipes the outer part of the ear he wipes the outer part of the ear with his tongue then after that he washes both of his feet including the ankles thrice right so that is basically the sifa for the wudu that is basically the description of the wudu from the beginning of it the first thing is that the niya and the tasmiya which is the same bismillah right and then we mentioned the the complete description of the wudu until we finish with washing of the feet three times it is important to note that beginning with the right side before the left side is a sunnah so you should begin with the right side before the left side it is also important to note that you should do it in the order that is mentioned in relation to the order that is mentioned between the acts that are that are fard the order that is mentioned is also fard right so you wash your face then your hands to your elbows then you wipe your head and then you wash your feet right so you do it in that in that order then the sheikh went on to say wa sunna liman faragha minhu raf'u basarihi ila as-sama wa qawlu ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh and it is a sunnah for the one when he finishes the wudu that he raises his eyes to the heavens saying ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. I testify that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. He is alone, has no partner, and Muhammad is his slave and messenger. In relation to raising the eyes to the heavens, uh, the hadith is not uh, authentic, but some people go to the extent and say that it is bid'ah. We don't say that it is bid'ah. Right? If someone does it, the, no problem if he does it. And if he doesn't do it, there is nothing specific in the Quran and the Sunnah that is Sahih to indicate it being Sunnah. But it comes under maybe general texts of the Quran uh, of looking into the sky, pondering upon creation and stuff. You know, general texts of the Quran and Sunnah. But in this specific instance, there is nothing that is authentically narrated in it in relation to uh, raising the eyes to the heavens right but it is not a bid'ah so if someone does it or if someone doesn't do it inshallah there will be no problem inshallah then the sheikh went on to say وَتُبَاحُ مَعُونَتَهُ وَتَنْشِيفُ أَعْضَائِهِ Assisting the one making wudu is allowed and drying one's limbs is also allowed. So if someone aids someone while making wudu, there is no problem with that. And also if someone dries his limbs after making wudu, then this is also allowed, inshallah. Inshallah, in the next class, inshallah, we would um, continue with this book, inshallah, we would do the description of the salah. Remember, we are only doing the description of the Salah. We are not really paying too much attention to the, um, to the proofs and stuff because it would be very lengthy. We want to finish it, inshallah, in the time that, is, that we specifically set for doing the, the job, inshallah.
So with this, inshallah, we would um, conclude this class. So we say, inshallah, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfirullah wa tubilayh. Until next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.